Okay, Emmy fans, we are right on the eve of those nominations coming out. I'm Tom O'Neill with Gold Derby. Here is Pete Hammond from Deadline. And uh, Pete, let's size up these likely nominees. Uh, on the comedy side, according to the predictions of Gold Derby, it's just a, going to be a landslide of nominations and likely wins for Ted Lasso. Let's start with comedy. So okay. Ted Lasso uh, predicted to win comedy series. Uh, supporting actress, actress with, for Hannah Waddingham, and of course, actor for Jason Sudeikis. Um, why? Or, and, <laughs> I, I, you know, I, it, okay, Apple. Apple is <laughs> looking for its big breakthrough here, and they're spending a lot of money. And uh, they also got a head start. This is a, you, you, there isn't a uh, legacy series like Schitt's Creek that they have, the Emmy voters are going to reward all of a sudden and give all the Emmys to in this category or, you know, a one season thing like um, the year before that, uh, where it was the Amazon, you know, British series. Um, uh, or there's always something, uh, you know, are the end of Veep. This year you're looking at new shows mostly here and Ted Lasso a first season thing not unprecedented of course you know but um but not the usual thing to come in and just do it I think it's because there's a lack of huge competition here but I would say it also is kind of beloved the timing was right for it it's yeah. about a nice guy which is so yeah. unusual and um you it know it has heart it, it yeah it <laughs> it still has that cynicism the critics are looking for, but boy, it just warms you to the uh, to the heart to watch it. Exactly, and Apple's so behind it because they really want a big win here. You know, it's funny, but Netflix has never won a comedy series, a drama series, or even a limited series uh, Emmy. They're the only mm -hmm. streamer along with Apple, and it looks like Apple could get this. I would say, though, being a member of the Academy, like you are, I actually really love as well. I love Hacks, you know, that show. Yes. And um, I just, you know, hang on one second. Yeah, okay. Uh, I love Hacks, Gene Smart, the whole oh, show. Wow. It's so good. It came in late. It's on HBO Max, which is another new service, you know. So it's interesting to see HBO Max and Apple really <laughs> leading the race here. Uh, there, because I think if anything can upset the apple cart for Ted Lasso, it would be that. But I'm not so sure that everybody has seen it or right, latched right. onto it yet in the amount of time that they've had to see Ted Lasso. So you'd be crazy to sort of go against the momentum for Ted Lasso. But don't discount a bit of competition here that could come in via hacks. These two new shows from two new streamers uh, in the comedy category. Right, and uh, uh, Jean Smart is uh, an Emmy favorite. She's won a few times, and uh, the show is about show business, and of course, it's absolutely brilliant. Uh, its chief competition is The Flight Attendant, um, uh, and that means uh, Kaylee Cuoco, who has never been nominated for, for an Emmy, and the strange thing is that the odds of Gold Derby is the uh, majority of regular users are saying, you know, uh, Kaylee's got this. But the overwhelming number of experts and uh, the top 24 and the rest of it say Gene Smart. And that's my prediction, too. Oh, God. I think Gene Smart is going, that performance she does in Hacks is one for the ages. I mean, yeah, she yeah, has yeah. just jumped into that role with part Joan Rivers, part other things. It's raw, it's funny, it's biting. It's just the performance of the year in television, in my opinion. It is by far. And uh, it will be nominated for comedy series. We'll have eight nominees. Um, I also like, you know, her co-star who has put herself, or they put her in supporting, even though it's, a, uh, you know, I, I, I can see why, absolutely yeah, yeah. why. Um, and she's terrific, by the way, uh, in this show as well. All of them, all the actors are great in Hacks. All of them are great. Hannah Waddingham is so wonderful, but so is- uh, <laughs> She steals the show. <laughs> so is Juno Temple, you know? Yes, yes. So, in, in and, uh, it, and Lasso. Yeah, so it's, it, it's such a good show <laughs> and it's right. so addictive and these streaming channels do allow you to binge them. So you can really get uh, involved over a weekend. 
Uh, we're going to jump over a lot of these. Let's go to the uh, drama category. I know we're, we're, in, we're totally insulting the uh, comp uh, so many other shows by not talking about them, but we have limited time here. Uh, the Crown is way ahead to win everything. Now, it's never won Best Drama Series, and it being a Netflix show, as you mentioned earlier, it would be the first time for them to win a top series award. And how perfect for The Crown, which has uh, been consistently good each time it's been nominated, but has never won. Now the competition is very light. Um, very light. When I voted, I couldn't find more than four shows that I could even check <laughs> off. You can vote for as many as you want. I, I voted for four. You know, I, I just, I know people love different dramatic shows for different reasons and things, you know, but for me, just looking down that list, it was slim pickings this year. Yeah. Uh, the Crown. I think The Crown is going to walk away with this, don't you? Yes, I think by far. Uh, and also it deserves to. It's, it was, I think this was its best season. But let me give you the numbers at Gold Derby. This is, again, how way lopsided things are. So we have 2,060 uh, users saying The Crown will win drama series. And in second place is The Mandalorian with 68. So 2,000 for the first play and then 68 for Mandalorian. <laughs> well, I mean, it's lopsided, no question. Um, there are other good shows. I really like uh, Perry Mason, which I had thought was a limited series, but it's not. It's, it's a series, however they decided to put it and classify it that way. And um, I think that's a pretty good show too. So I think that could be in there. Handmaid's Tale, I think will be in there again. Yes, um, and that had a very good season. Uh, so there's competition, you know, uh, there, but it doesn't seem like it, it will be anybody's but the crown here at this point. I mean, I don't see it. And yeah. then what happens in these acting categories? So this is where it gets really interesting. So drama actress, we've got uh, both, uh, you know, Emma Corrin and Olivia Coleman as the front runners here. Uh, uh, where do you come down about this race? The coast. Well, I love um, uh, Elizabeth uh, Moss as well. You know, she's only won yeah. once here. And um, I, I think she had a great season. She directed three of the episodes. Um, you're looking at somebody that's really proven herself to be so versatile in movies and everything else. I think it could be her time again if the crown people split like they have. Yes, often. yes and allow someone else to come in. I think that someone else is probably Elizabeth Moss. You know who's getting a ton of votes? Uh, Uzo Aduba in, uh, in Treatment. And if you've seen it, I hear it's very good. I have to confess, I haven't seen that one yet, but it's Uzo Aduba. And she keeps <laughs> winning. She wins for like everything. And then Me and Regina King can't lose. Right? <laughs> I know. I know. I, I would love I, to see them both in the same category. <laughs> and and let's, let's, let's throw into that same category Diane Weiss, because remember when she was in, in treatment, the early edition, uh, editions of it, yeah. she would automatically win all the time. So, so uh, Uzo is in this magic uh, uh, show that does so well. So it's quite a category. And then I think there's actually a chance for MJ Rodriguez from Pose uh, to win. Well, they've done an interesting I mean, campaign. If you want to talk about Pose for a second. Yeah, let's um, do that, yeah. Pose has done a unique Emmy campaign in which they basically have begged the Academy to consider them because of all the people in it, in, in the LGBTQ and uh, uh, trans and all of that community, and are really playing off that um, and, and, and took out a full page, very kind of a, a thinly written, you have to read the whole thing, uh, ad in the LA Times and, um, and said, we know we've been nominated for a drama series before. We know we've won some Emmys, obviously. Um, Billy Porter won. But Billy Porter in the first year. So it's unusual for a series that has had that kind of recognition to now say, basically, please vote for us because we really want that recognition. And, uh, and going off of the social issues and everything else that the series has brought up and trying to stress its importance to the community and why that makes them Emmy worthy and in their final season. And it, it lined up perfectly with other issues. For example, this was its final season. So they were saying farewell to the show itself, which was so historic. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, Billy Porter revealed that he had has HIV, just as the character is dying of it in in the finale. And there were so many, and they, he did such a wonderful job, Billy did in the whole cast, making themselves available to all of us in the press. The conversations were riveting, powerful, deeply moving. Uh, it really shook uh, feelings in everyone uh, profoundly. And we did several talks with uh, the gang. Boy, they were some of the most interesting, wonderful chats I've ever had as a journalist. So there's something special going on. And, and as you say, uh, they had, you know, uh, FX and uh, 20, uh, 20 the, the producer, the stu studio, uh, 21st Century, what is it now? They have uh, really, really gotten behind it and had a tremendous campaign that, in that included dr the drive-in uh, showings and a million uh, private events. Um, I think they ran a masterful campaign. Billy, it's, will a, it's a different campaign and it may pay off. And they you know, very well pay off. I have him winning. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so there's a wild card for you uh, in that way, too, in that race. So. But Josh O'Connor is ahead in our odds according, uh, for the crown, but uh, considerably so by others. But Billy and, and Pose were underestimated in the past. Nobody saw that that best series nomination coming from Pose two years ago. I did predict it. Um, and Billy got in last year, but the show didn't. Um, is there anybody else that Josh is opposite against in his own show? Or well, yeah. Oh, uh, no, not really. But not in that oh, category. No, but you know, uh, Matthew Reese, recent winner for the Americans with Perry Mason. I it, think he's great in that show. I know, I know. He's I think real. he's also a possibility here. I uh, do too. You know, so it, it just depends. Look, there's 20,000 voters in the Emmy, <laughs> and, and, but only actors are voting on this and who's in the club and all of these kinds of things and, and what's getting through to them. There's been wow. so much campaigning going on for Emmys. It's more than the Oscars now. It's just big and you get all these deliveries and things and weird stuff. Um, so, you know, you never quite know how it's going to go or who's going to get snubbed. In this category, there's, you know, it just seems like it's Billy Porter uh, and, um, and Josh. Uh, Josh, obviously, with a show that everyone's seen in the crown and he's great and he's previously won some awards this season so you know uh, he would seem to be you know a a good contender but you know maybe not as high profile in an odd way so, yeah i i don't think i i think it's billy i think there's such an outpouring yeah love him. do you know who's a shoe in to win too from the crown is jillian anderson that, yeah, it was 11, 11 years ago that Meryl Streep won her Oscar for portraying the uh, Iron Lady. <laughs> right. Well, Margaret and, Thatcher is the way to go. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and you so know. I, I, you know, she's up against her co-star, Helena Bonham Carter, who didn't win a year or two ago when we thought she would. Yeah. And uh, Ann Dowd, who's won before. There are, uh, several of the Handmaid's Tale women here. But boy, Gillian Anderson is, I think. I, I think she's the one, and she's also previously won a few awards this year too, so yeah. Yes, uh -huh. now uh, in the supporting actor category, this is a, a strange one because we have Michael K. Williams competing, uh, and he's way ahead in our odds for best supporting actor, and the show is canceled, Lovecraft. Uh, uh, we'll we'll see what happens with that. Um, the uh, uh, cancellation announcement was, uh, uh, made after um, the Emmy voting closed. Oh, that's and true. Clearly yeah. on purpose. Um, and, uh, and so when people were voting, they only thought of this as kind of a hot show that's on, came on last summer, however, which is always not the greatest thing. And, um, and you know, so they're just voting thinking it's gonna go on. And so it doesn't have that kind of cancellation thing hovering right. over it in, during the vote. So we'll see what happened. It's uh, he, uh, Williams is competing against three Emmy r super darlings. Um, Bradley Whitford, who's who, uh, of course, has won recently for The Handmaid's Tale, had won way back for The West Wing. Uh, John Lithgow and Perry Mason. Uh, Tobias Menzies is probably overdue. He's competing for The Crown, of course. And everybody, every year, everybody predicts uh, Giancarlo Esposito to win. Um, He's on the list for a nomination here. Well, here's 
here's the thing with that. John Lithgow has won six Emmys. Seems to, he's won for the crown. So those crown people, you <laughs> right. know, ironically now have to fight against this guy who, you know, hey, spoiler alert, if you don't want to know, <laughs> is killed off in the fourth episode of Perry Mayer. <laughs> and but he makes a powerful statement and um and it's a very good character and it's John Lithgow. Mm -hmm. So watch out for him. Let's talk about the those the races that are the most competitive and involve the big superstar movie stars and the rest of it. This is limited uh series and uh its performances. Help help us out with this uh Sizing up limited series, uh, Pete. The Queen's Gambit has led at Gold Derby from the very beginning and has a strong lead now. However, th uh, the cool show and the critics darling is I May Destroy You, which has all won a bunch of critics awards recently. And but, BAFTA, it won at BAFTA, big that, Right, it won at BAFTA, that's true. Uh, Mayor of Easttown uh, with Kate Winslet really took off uh, with Buzz and with uh, uh, lots of admiration and love at the right time. So, it, but it may just be a case of her benefiting and not the show. Underground Railroad from Amazon is really underrated because it has so many strong supporters, but I'm not sure how many people have seen it, but those who have uh, uh, given it a chance have really gotten hooked on it. And then you get into small acts, which is very controversial because whether it's a really a miniseries or a movie, et cetera. But it actually won Best Picture at the LA Film Critics this year. I know, I know, I know. So that's in the mix. That's from Amazon. And then you've got WandaVision from Disney Plus. And my gosh. And you've got a teacher from Hulu and you've got all kinds of possibilities. You've got the undoing, the undoing. From earlier in the year that made a big splash when it came on giving HBO three possibilities in this category, which only has five nominees, yeah. nominees as opposed to drama series and comedy, which eight, have eight. eight. Yeah. So that's a mistake. This of is the category where you need eight. Those are the categories where you need five, as it turns out this year. I think the Academy needs to look at that. But um, because there's inevitably going to be snubs here. You can't get around it when you only have five categories. I mean, five uh, um, five uh, nominees. So we should, we should also uh, mention that genius Aretha is a, is a factor here. Um, that's another show too. I just think a lot of these are going to get cut out. I've I've seen most of them. I think the Underground Railroad is magnificent. It's a yes. wonderful piece of filmmaking. If and I told this to Barry Jenkins himself, who did the show, if voters people get through that first episode, which is gut wrenching yeah. to watch, and do they want to go on thinking it's going to be more of that? This show goes into many different twists and turns over the course of its 10 episodes, and it's really something. I binged it over the course of a weekend, and uh, I thought it was extraordinary. I think Mayor of Easttown was just great. I love The Undoing. I think that's just so well-crafted as that kind of David E. Kelly show with two big stars and kept you guessing. And, and it's a water cooler show. People talked about it. Because oh, they did. But, it, but it's a little old. It ran, uh, what, like six months ago or something? Oh, yeah, a long time ago. And then Mare came, and that became a water cooler show. Yeah, yeah. Too. Uh, and I think there's something to that. These shows can build, and they both built to all-time kind of ratings for finales on HBO because of that, because we live in an era of streaming and binging and all of that. And so it's how you're watching these shows, too, that could affect voters too in their memory or whenever uh, they're casting their ballot of how they felt when they were watching it. Uh, it's an interesting kind of uh, dynamic that you, you consider here too. The actress uh, contest here is very, very uh, strong. We've got uh, uh, Anya Taylor-Joy for Queen's Gambit. And of course, Queen's Gambit is by far the front runner, but that came out earlier. We should mention that. Yeah, that's the problem with it. It, uh, it, was, it was like, but it won everything, Tom. There isn't a Guild Award, I know. Uh, yeah. a Critics Award, on any award that that yeah. show didn't uh, win. Uh, it would yeah. be unprecedented in Emmy history for a show to do that kind of sweep and lose the top prize at the Emmys. Yeah, yeah. Um, but Netflix is snake bit. 
when it comes to these categories. So yes, and uh, Anya, of course, is what's so compelling about uh, the show. Uh, Kate Winslet for uh, *Mayor of Easttown*. Of course, uh, the they love Oscar-winning movie stars in these categories. They tend to when you look through lists of past winners historically, it looks like Oscar lists. She's so good too. And she has done interviews up the kazoo for this and talked about it and actually said something interesting. She said, this show is like Titanic all over again for her. <laughs> People stop her on the street. They um, want to talk to her. They want to touch her. It, it, you know, there's something about what the television medium can do with something like this. And, and it really worked for her on this show. We have uh, Cynthia Erivo who has, uh, it, it, it's as if, you know, Hollywood is desperate to, to give Cynthia Riva awards. Uh, even when she did the Harriet Tubman uh, movie the, uh, a year or two ago, uh, she got Oscar nominated, didn't she? And, but the movie was... was uh, oh, sure. She got Oscar nominated for sure twice. She was also up for best song. Oh, that's right. Okay. So that's how much uh, there is an eagerness to give her awards and she's in this, she did a splendid job with uh, Aretha. I loved, loved it. Um, what do you think? And then we've got, you know, Nicole Kidman for The Undoing. We have, I can't pronounce, uh, everybody's uh, in love with her from uh, Underground Railroad. Fusso. Oh yeah, th th she's the star. So yeah, it, it yeah. all revolves around her. She's great. I think she'll be nominated actually, if yeah. they saw it. I mean, if they watched it. Well, that's the Nicole problem the here. You know, I mean, I know, Nicole I know. Kidman doesn't have to be seen in the show to know who Nicole Kidman is, but definitely she does in the Underground Railroad, and Michaela does in I May Destroy You, and uh, you know, Kate Winslet does not. You know, they come in with you know, so it's sort of an interesting thing, uh, the movie star versus the person that's just dominating uh, these series. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how that that breaks out uh, down the road too. And then you have a, a teacher, I thought she was yes, uh, Kate very Mara. good. Uh, Kate Mara in that, um, you know, it, down the line you go here. And, and as to your question with Cynthia Rebo, she's, she's great as Aretha, but we know Jennifer Hudson's coming up. And, uh, you know, <laughs> so are we waiting for that? Um, because there's so much competition here, this Aretha may go by the wayside or is the Emmy voter the same as the Academy voter and can't resist a real live person that they know and watching and go, oh, they're just like them. Let's give them an, you know, an Emmy or an Oscar. Yeah. Uh, the male category is uh, led by strongly by Ethan Hawke in The Good Lord Bird. He's great. I, I really, really good. That was on Showtime. And then uh, Hugh Grant for The Undoing, who is a distant second. Or uh, that The Undoing is is kind of old and has, he's been dropping over time as uh, the bus. Hugh Grant spent the fall or the spring or whatever the award circuit was losing regularly know, yeah. to Mark Ruffalo, who was last year's Emmys. And uh, so he's not in here. So this is clear new territory for Hugh Grant, who's a That's charmer, a good point. has done a ton of uh, interviews and should be higher up on that gold derby list because I still think uh, The Undoing has been much more widely seen than The Good Lord Bird, the Ethan Hawke show, which is- Yeah, that's the, that's the issue. Ethan uh, may actually be, well, in my mind, and in a lot of others, uh, he, he's won a lot of uh, early awards. Uh, again, it's what have they seen? That's the problem here. It comes down to that. And I, I just think The Undoing and Hugh Grant have an advantage there, um, you know, so we'll see what happens. Um, clearly HBO is putting all the money behind it uh, as they are with anything. So, and and that is the undoing's biggest hope is to pull off Hugh Grant. Yeah, so. absolutely. Uh, Paul Bettany for WandaVision. He's so good in WandaVision. I know, I know. And talk about a challenge for an actor to take on the persona of Dick Van Dyke and all these <laughs> things that they had to go into and then do this character. And plus he's in a great in a TV movie. He's kind of competing against himself, Uncle Frank, which was at yeah. Sundance uh, in the same category here. Um, but 
Oh my God, the combination of those two uh, makes him great. But again, WandaVision isn't the type of thing Academy voters necessarily are going to gravitate to, but they may have here because it's a real tribute to uh, classic TV as well. Wow. And that may appeal beyond the Marvel crowd that the Academy voters tend to snub their nose at uh, in finally handing out uh, serious awards. They'll give it to the <laughs> Mandalorian below the line, you know, or Battlestar Galactica or whatever. But, you know, they will not go that extra mile with with Marvel yet. We'll see. What's curious is that we have the Hamilton actors here, uh, Lin Manuel uh, Miranda, who, if I remember this, lost the Tony to his co-star, Lin uh, um, Odom, uh, and now they're competing again. So let's say uh, with this, and we'll get to this topic of this of the fairly recent new voting Emmy system, which is much more of a popular vote. Uh, if if uh, the bulk of voters have not seen Hamilton, you would make the assumption that Lin-Manuel would be the uh, the presumed front runner over a co-star, but the fact that he lost at the Tonys of all things was was um, surprising. They're strong. I mean, they're, they're, they've been part of the zeitgeist for, for years as the, as the show. It's hard to say, Matt. It, it really comes down to, does an Emmy voter say, is this fair? They basically right. got the show. They won Tonys. They did all this. Now we're going to give them Emmys. It, I, you know, I just have a feeling that that's not going to pan out and, uh, and, and that Hamilton's not going to figure into the acting categories. If it does, then those Emmy actor branch voters are just totally accepting uh, of anything here as that's not pure television. It's not a pure television. In fact, it wasn't even meant to be on the streamer. It was meant to be in theaters, uh, Hamilton. Wouldn't have, we wouldn't even be talking about this. But because of the pandemic and the whole thing and Disney Plus, they, they made it there. And even though it was at the Golden Globes, eligible in, in the uh, film categories, I believe, uh, nobody pays too much attention to what the Golden Globes have to say right now at this given time. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, help me out with this TV movie category. Uh, Sylvie's Love has been way ahead. This is the lovely end. movie. Yeah. Um, forever. Uh, and Uncle Frank comes in second. Uh, Again, you know, these are both two movies picked up out of Sundance. So they were made to be indie movies that became television movies when Amazon picked them up and decided to put them in those categories. Then the uh, biopic on uh, Mahalia Jackson. Uh, Lifetime. And then Oslo is really rising in this straight upshot of uh, uh, in our charts. And it kind of looks like Chernobyl uh, in a way. Uh, it's, you know, it's set back in time and has that kind of same kind of uh, pastel grainy look. It's it, it is about the, uh, you know, the old uh, political rivalries. So is Oslo really is soaring up whilst uh, Sylvie's love has held the lead here throughout the season. What, what wins? Well, Oslo, this... if they've seen Oslo, yeah, you know, I don't know. I haven't seen it. I know it won a Tony. Um, I, uh, it was like three hours long, I remember, on Broadway. Uh, so whatever. Um, I loved Sylvie's Love. It's a sweet movie. It's a throwback to the 50s. It's a throwback to movie romances, except it features two black stars. So it's a black story. And that is very important right now. And they may give it points for being like an Audrey Hepburn movie, but doing that. And, uh, and I liked it a lot. I liked Uncle Frank, too. I don't think that's going to win. Uh, I don't think Mahalia is going to win. She's another one we could throw into the actress. Lee Absolutely. Yeah. Danielle Brooks, uh, who, of course, was nominated for a Tony on Broadway for uh, Color Purple. Uh, she's terrific as Mahalia Jackson. But then you've got the Aretha thing. They may be canceling themselves out, these big, great, wonderful, iconic singers. You know, how many slots do you have? You don't. So you, you, you take your choices here of 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 what you've seen and, and what you like. They're all deserving. I can tell you that they are all deserving. Sylvie's love would be where my vote would go in this category. Um, we'll see. Pete, what's your estimation of what's going on with this new voting? So let's explain. It used to be in the old days, there would be small juries of people that who would meet 
originally in hotel rooms, and then they were allowed to stay at home and see uh, uh, and get DVDs of screeners. They were limited to four categories, the voters. So they tended to actually watch everything that was nominated. A couple of years ago, the Academy threw uh, the doors open and said, everybody in the, in the acting branch can now vote for all the acting categories, um, like they do for nominations at the Oscars, et cetera. But, and they've, they've been trying to, what they believe is democratize the vote. But you and I know as award watchers, um, they're, they're giving votes to people who in many cases haven't seen a lot of these things. Now last year, uh, Schitt's Creek uh, had such a sweep, it set a new record for most wins in best comedy uh, series at eight, uh, the most yeah. for, in, for series. That was what such a sweet sweep it was, and Succession had a sweep. This year, we're looking at uh, Ted Lasso and the crown sweeping. Now, maybe it's just a coincidence, and maybe it's also the pandemic. There have been a lot of shows not in production. The competition is uh, less uh, robust than in past years. Or are these alarm bells going off that you and I need to heed to say, wait a minute, uh, why is one show just, you know, continuing to sweep? Dominating? Yeah. I, I think in uh, just looking at it, as I looked at the ballot when I was voting, it's very difficult to find that kind of like uh, density of uh, quality that a lot of voters are going to have seen a number of these shows. So it becomes you've seen this one, you know, mm -hmm. it, it came through and you went through it. So you watched it and, and oh, I'm going to vote for that. And then it just sort of like goes down the line that way. It, 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 it seems like that's the mindset once they land on one show with all the campaigning and all the, I call it clutter that you have to get through <laughs> here uh, on the Emmys and all the stuff. It's enormously challenging. I haven't even heard, not of half the shows that they're pushing forward that are on these ballots. I haven't heard of half the networks that these <laughs> things are on. I don't even know how you see them, except that I got three or four invitations a day to go into the Academy digital screening and watch this or that. It was overwhelming. And so mm -hmm. it's easier when you've got one show that is getting all this acclaim and winning all these other awards and you can just follow like, you know, lemmings. You know, a good <laughs> example of that is uh, the Peacock channel and, uh, and, and people's confusion of whether or not they can uh, see like Tina Fey's new show on there, Girls Five Ever, Five Ever, which uh, is a lot of fun and would normally, if it was Netflix, would get tons and tons of nominations. Uh, I don't know how it's going to do on Peacock because it's like Paramount Plus, which is a rebranding of CBS All Access, and it's it, it's like one of these less uh, giant streamers that. Um, Yes, you know, these shows are available on the Academy site and, you know, and screenings, et cetera, but. Well, I think Girls 5 Eva can get in, uh, you know, I mean, enough of it. They, they, they've made an effort to campaign it. Uh, it's gotten good reviews. Um, it's, I, I watched one or two of them and, you know, it's fine. It's not like appointment television for me, but I liked it. Um, but it's like thinking, oh, it's on Peacock. Peacock. I can see it all the time. And I sort of like, so I'll get to it, you know, I'll get to right. it unless I'm doing something with it. The same was another show they have on Peacock that they uh, would love to see in the Emmys called Rutherford Falls, which they just renewed again too, and, and has one of the stars of The Office and all of that going for it uh, as well. And, and that's a nice little show. Uh, it's just like, you just don't think about all this. That's what I mean. It's just so much content and so many ways of delivering it and finding it. And, um, and yeah, and you know, if, if you're watching TV, you, you, you need a map. You need, <laughs> yeah, you know, all absolutely. This. And I, if for even me to remember what to watch. I mean, if I had my druthers uh, in comedy series, I'd put Call My Agent in there, which has been on Netflix for four years. It's a French series, so it's not thrown into this oh. mix. Right. Um, it's, I guess it's in international Emmys, but to me, there's nothing better than that show. Or Lupin in drama, I would put that in. Uh, you know, these are shows that are talked about in the industry, believe me, um, mm -hmm. but they're not even on the Emmy ballot, so.
But isn't it interesting, the ascendancy of the Emmys in recent years, uh, especially, let's say, on the business side, the FYC money used to uh, dom Oscar used to dominate the FYC uh, campaigns and uh, the money spent in the events and the party. And now be, with the introduction of these streamers and they're multiplying and they're, uh, this is an important way for them to get not only attention from viewers, but the kind of acknowledgement from the industry that, they're, that, they're that they really belong at the party. Uh, and so now what you and I've witnessed through these decades covering these awards is this point where now, uh, the vast majority of money spent on award campaigns is now on the Emmy side. And uh, it's interesting that, uh, and of course, everyone loves to say, uh, you know, t TV shows now are much better than feature films anyway, well before the pandemic when they, when they were more competitive yeah. genres. It's definitely, yeah, it's definitely the case. And uh, so, you know, the campaign, uh, money is there. Uh, you know, it's still the same idea of Oscars. Uh, there, there's just less. Studios want at least one movie, a prestige thing, to get all the executives' invites to the Oscars, you know, and have them sit there and things, you know, but it's not a thing for them. Uh, I don't know that it is a thing for even Netflix here. I mean, they want the prestige of the awards and all of that, but they put on a lot of other shows that would never be something that they could throw at awards. They also want Sub subscribers and viewers and all kinds of things there. And so it's a mixed bag. Apple is chomping at the bit. They want to come in and they want oh, yes. to win a big win. And they, I mean, they will send you emails the minute they get nominated <laughs> for hair and makeup at the daytime Emmys. So <laughs> imagine if they can dominate. This is a big breakthrough for a streamer for a newbie, for somebody coming into the game now. It would be big for Peacock. It would be big for HBO Max. All of these to win these awards and tout the success of their streaming gambles that are all put on by these major studios, um, uh, you know, trying to compete with Netflix. So that's the game here. And the money, of course, we know is with all of them. Uh, you know, where is poor CBS and, and NBC. Oh, the whole yeah. broadcast industry has <laughs> given up and walked away and they just do procedurals uh, on TV. Night. Right. I mean, you know, Reality they shows. turned over next season two full primetime nights to Dick Wolf, you know, with variations of Chicago and whatever <laughs> city he's taking over on the other one, uh, you know, but these procedurals, I mean, you're right. They've thrown in the towel. It's yeah. It's very little that's going to stand up for the networks, except in the talk shows, maybe, or in the um, uh, variety, uh, Saturday Night Live, and, and things like that, and a few other categories. But, you know, mainly they're out of the game. And the irony, of course, is that the Emmys, in terms of being a telecast, rotate between the broadcast channels and Fox, those four that don't <laughs> win the awards. It's, I know. <laughs> and at the lowest, of course, we'll blame it on the pandemic. I thought they did the best award show of the year. It was still the first. Oh, they, they did. Have. Absolutely. Uh, you know, and they get the lowest ratings ever, which Jimmy Kimmel predicted to me. He said, oh, this is going to be the lowest rated show ever. Yeah. But it was a really good show. And yeah, they, they, they did it better than the Oscars, for sure. Look, we have a category here where we vote on the Oscars and the Golden Globes and things. And I couldn't bring myself to vote this year for the Oscars or the Golden Globes, of course, or <laughs> any of these. And I really wanted to vote for the Emmys, but the Emmys itself is not eligible for an Emmy. Right, they made right, that right. decision years ago. Um, well, well, that's because the Emmys would be would be eligible. This goes back to the 1950s. And then they wouldn't get in. It would be so embarrassing. But the Oscars <laughs> would get in. So you know what they did is, and this rule has changed back and forth through the years, but now I believe uh, they've got this ridiculous uh, quote unquote compromise where I believe the craftspeople from the Emmy telecasts and the, uh, uh, all behind the camera people are eligible for those oh, awards. Is that right? I didn't know that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure yeah. they are. And uh, uh, I mean, I don't vote on crafts. I vote on 15 program categories and five writing because I'm in the writer's branch. But, right, right. you know, uh, I, we don't get to vote on those other uh, craft things. So I didn't see them on my ballot. But uh, I do think the Emmys deserves an Emmy, and I'll leave it at that, Tom. <laughs> okay, let that. I would agree with that.